What I'm doing with this class, I'm going to be drawing on uh, cold pressed watercolor paper, but any kind of drawing paper is fine. I'm only going to be using two pencils. I've got a 2B and a 3B. If you don't know anything about pencils, uh, this means they're soft. The basic pencil that you get when you just go buy a generic pencil is something called HB, which is not too soft, not too hard. It just kind of sits in the middle. It's good all around purpose. So these are a little bit softer. And I've also got them sharpened to a fine point as well. Uh, if you only have a regular pencil, that's okay too. You are going to want to have it pretty sharp though. So if you have a pencil sharpener, you might want to use that. Here's mine. It's kind of fancy because it opens up and keeps all the dirt inside instead of throwing it all over my desk like other ones I've had. <laughs> so what I want to do for drawing this is a technique that I learned from an illustrator based out of New York City actually. His name is James Sisti. And if you ever get a chance, I do recommend his classes. He also offers them through Eventbrite. And he is also a naturalist. So what I want to do with this is show you a technique where you're using a pencil to get the shape of the acorn in and also a lot of the texture in it, but without having to do any kind of erasing or doing any kind of lines at the get go. So normally when we draw, like let's say someone wanted to draw an acorn, they'll just draw a shape kind of like this. And there's my acorn. Can you see that at all? Okay, so everyone can see it. I'm just making sure. So we're not going to be doing this technique. Instead, we're going to be doing something that's kind of like dot to dot. So we're going to find our acorn and pick about how wide we want to draw it. So let's see, I'm looking at one side of the acorn, so this side and then the other side. So from your angle, it'll be kind of like top and bottom. So here's the, the widest part. I'm gonna make my dot darker than normal so you can see where it is. And I'm gonna draw it about that wide. And then I'm going to look, oh, how far is it? for the cap and I'm going to draw the cap about here and then I'm going to look for the length and I'm going to say oh it goes about here and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of draw little tiny dots all around to kind of match the shape and then I'm going to end up with basically kind of like a dot to dot. You remember those dot to dot books? I don't know if I'm the only one who did those, but kind of like you get coloring books and then dot to dot, and then you would kind of draw those in and then color them if you wanted to. So I'm making my own here. And if something looks like it's not quite the right uh, proportions, then you can still adjust it. You can say, oh, this should be a little wider here. So I'll bring it out a little bit and follow along with the cap. And this technique will work for all sorts of things. Like I said, I'm using the acorn because I think it's a, a fairly easy project to do, but it'll also give you a really good understanding of uh, the different textures you can get with just pencil and nothing else, a little bit of time. So I've got a rough shape, dot to dot shape of my, uh, my acorn here. Are there any questions so far? No? Okay. So now I get to kind of go inside the acorn. So you're going to notice that on the body of the acorn, it's very, very smooth. Here's where we're going to take our pencil and maybe use it in a way that you're not used to. So you're just going to set it on top of your hand. You're not going to put any pressure down because it's easy to make a really dark line. We're not going to do that. We're going to find where the light is coming down on the acorn. So from my view, I'm seeing this spot on the acorn is the lightest part. So I'm going to draw like a little dot around my highlight there. And then what I'm going to do is just hold the pencil so that the pencil weight itself is here and just draw a whole bunch of little tiny circles. So you can see I don't even have my thumb on top. I'm just going very, very, very light. And all the graphite from my pencil is going into the roughness of the paper. 
So it's super, super, super light. And this is kind of a meditative approach too. So you can follow along and we'll do these little tiny circles. And the thing is with these, as you're going along, you can build up on top of them and make them a little darker. Find out where your shadows are. And just put a little bit more graphite on top. And if you like, you can talk while this is happening too. Because it's quite meditative. So do you want to like stop and start each circle or do you like a continuous? It's just continuous as I'm going. Awesome. It's just scribbling really. We're going yeah. to create this acorn just by scribbling little tiny, tiny circles. Just with the weight of the pencil itself. And I'm not going into that highlight area. It's just going around it. And you can see how those dots that we drew earlier on are just kind of disappearing into all of this. So I can kind of see, but the, the white paper is pretty bright. I don't know if you'd be able to tilt anymore yeah okay you see that so yeah that's better. what i've got so far mm -hmm. i'll go a little bit darker just just for the sake of the exercise just so you can see it but on your own don't push down on your pencil just uh just let it use the only the weight of the pencil itself and these gentle circles and eventually you're going to end up with this kind of groove this flat spot on the bottom of your point and that's perfect because that means it's going to cover more area. Any questions so far from anyone? I could tell you about how I found this acorn too. I went on a big hunt for an acorn. I felt very, very witchy about it all because I decided to go for a walk um, around sunset. And the only place I knew in the area that has oak trees is a, <laughs> a cemetery nearby. So I went to the cemetery on the night of a new moon, which meant I couldn't see anything and I couldn't find any acorns at all but I found a really cool stick, so I brought that home. That's, that's artists for you. You go out and bring home all kinds of junk to draw with. And so I put a request out online if anyone knew where any oak trees were in the area, because I couldn't find one. And someone told me a street and I went there and I found feathers and I found a really, really cheeky squirrel sitting it in the tree throwing bits of acorn at me, but not a whole acorn. <laughs> but eventually, I did find the acorn I was looking for, and here we are. Now, I can also see a little bit of, um, of a light over here, so I'm just going to fill around that a bit more. But we're getting a little bit more shape. Now, I see more shadow on this side, so I'm just going to darken it more here. Can you Excuse see me? this shape coming together on my... It's looking like the smooth part of the acorn just by drawing little circles. So we can give that one a bit of a break now and we can move over to the cap. Now this one you'll see is very textured. So if I bring it close, it's very rough compared to the smoothness of the body here. And we're going to uh, capture that texture the same way. We're just gonna do those little circles. And this time, if you have a darker pencil, you can switch to your darker pencil. For me, this will be my 3B. And the same technique, I'm going in those little circles. Thank you. 
And you'll see that there's some places where there's more of a shadow. So I might kind of draw circles there a little bit longer. And I'll notice that it's kind of light going across the band where it connects the, uh, the lid or the cap with uh, the base. So I'm going to keep that part a little bit uncolored just to show that highlight a bit. can see it comes out a little bit more so you can still kind of adjust your proportions put in a little more of the details in here. Still with those little bitty circles, just letting them linger in little spots. You don't have to worry about catching every single little divot exactly right. We're not going that detailed, but we are going to end up with a nice textured cap on our acorn. Are there acorns down in Chile? I don't know if there's any oak trees in that part of South America or not. I believe we don't have. No oak trees? Have you seen acorns no. before? Actually, just on cartoons, on old, old cartoons. Oh. oh, they're really neat. I've never been to Chile before, but I've been to other parts of South America and I love it down there. Great weather we have. Oh yeah. Better than us, it gets pretty cold here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Although... I actually lived in, I stayed in Toronto for about five months, but like okay. about 10 years ago. Wow. And it's the coldest place on earth. <laughs> <laughs> I know in colder winter. places. <laughs> in the winter? Did you stay in yeah, the winter? Yeah, I yeah, stayed the whole winter actually. Oh boy. It you is very cold if you're not used to it, yes. Yeah. I made the mistake when I first moved to Toronto of wearing nylons out in minus 14 degree weather. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> you always need two pairs of pants. <laughs> actually, I remember a day there were like minus five or min minus two or something like that. And people were saying, oh, it's a great day. It's a nice day yeah. today. I sleep outside sometimes when it's that cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go out in my sleeping bag because I like it if I can see my breath. As long as my body is warm and I have a good warm sleeping bag, I'm happy. But <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about keeping your or warm but a lot of us are from like northern Canada so we do like the cold um, it's true. <laughs> and right now in the whole summer Toronto has been about 30 degrees and I do not like it it's been way like, too hot for me so much humidity as well a lot of the Inuit I know we we don't do well in the heat <laughs> <laughs> myself included same here. I don't like the heat. It makes me feel sick. You have actually an extreme weather. It's like really cold winter and really hot summers, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I used to live on the Maritimes, which is more extreme than it is in this part of Ontario. And it was not unusual for it to be 40 below in the, the winter time and 40 above in the summer. Yeah, it's a really big spread for sure. Uh, I went to Ecuador a few years ago and I climbed up on one of the volcanoes and they told me, oh, it's very cold up on the mountains, so make sure you're wearing layers. So I was like, oh, okay. So I had sweater and long sleeve shirt and everything. 
And then I got up the hill and for me, it felt like a really nice September day. So I ended up taking off my jacket and I was going around in my shirt sleeves and I saw all these people wearing parkas and mittens and gloves and scarves. <laughs> and they looked at me and they were, aren't you cold? And I said, no. And they're like, where are you from? And I said, Canada. And they went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe laugh. Okay, so at the very bottom part of the acorn, you'll also see it has a little, like a little tail right here. So I'm going to try to draw that part too. And it just kind of comes out a little bit. So I'll do the circles again. And then what I can do is here's where you can kind of connect your dots. You can lightly just Draw along the outside to give it some shape. So I put it up here so you can see what I'm doing. Here's my acorn just from drawing those little circles so far. And now I'm fitting it around the edge. And this is where you want to have a really sharp pencil for this part because it's going to really give it, it's going to let it pop a lot more. Make it look more three dimensional. Nice. coming along here. It's looking acorny, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is. Awesome. I feel like when I draw straight lines, I can never just draw one straight line. I have to like etch very slowly and it's kind of well, crooked. I'm just doing so, like little tiny strokes here. I'm not doing anything yeah. long. Yeah, I could not be a tattoo artist. <laughs> have straight lines. I would be scared to be a tattoo artist. I guess unless it's stick and poke because then you just yeah then it might poke little dots. I draw around the edge, and you'll see that the top part is not smooth. So let it be bumpy when you're you're kind of connecting your dots going around. Let it kind of go into those little divots and then out again. So no straight lines here. Mm -hmm. This is just going to accentuate the texture of that top. I'm excited to see how everyone's acorns are turning out. Me too. <laughs> it's kind of like nature, like they won't all look the same. But no, they won't. won't. Everyone's going to have really a good. different one. Yeah. And you can do this technique from life. You can do it from photo. How is everyone doing? Putting a little more dark up here. And I'm going to do the same thing along here. So the light part of my acorn, I'm also going to kind of trace along the white part between uh, the cap and there to really show the texture that's happening there as well. So the same kind of idea. Just kind of follow little bumpy edges. You can 
can see it's a little more detailed now. And this is just from drawing circles and those just little bitty connect the dot kind of lines. I think that's pretty cool. I wish I had learned this technique when I was uh, doing botanic illustration as a, a student. It was a summer job I had. Pretty cool job, really. I built a, I helped install a botanic garden. And at the time, I thought I was a pretty decent artist. Yeah. Noodling around and I was working with a botanist and his name was Hal Hines and he was a really great guy. He, he's died a few years ago now, but uh, at the time I took a drawing of a flower up to him and I said, how's this? And I was expecting him to go, oh, that's so good. But no, he's like, no, 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 that's all wrong. You've got the stamens in the, the, in the wrong spot. You've got the wrong number of petals, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was much more careful the next time. And I, I learned a whole lot working with him. Mm -hmm. When you work from life like that, you learn so much about about what you're working on yeah like looking at this acorn you see so many little details when you're drawing it that you might not ever have noticed so mm -hmm. i'm also seeing a little line that kind of runs just under that white mark and i'm going to follow that as well i feel like this technique is really really good because it looks very natural it does look very natural yeah. doesn't it isn't it it's such a cool technique i wish i'd known it so much longer than i did is anybody else familiar with this technique? And here's my acorn so far, just, oh. just from doing those little circles and, uh, and just connecting the lines. So I don't know that it is a perfect rendition, but it looks like the same variety of acorn. If you wanted, you could do the same thing with pencil colors too. Uh, pencil crayons or colored pencil. I think you call them colored pencils in the United States. I think it's pencil crayon in Canada. That's a, a regional thing. And there, and I didn't have to use an eraser even once to do this technique. That's the cool thing about it. So now that you've learned this kind of technique, you can use this to draw all kinds of things. So you can see how you can use it to draw something very smooth. And you see how you can also use it to draw something that's very textured and rough. And I think it's very handy that way. I'm going to tip it up here so I can see your faces better without me ducking underneath. <laughs> How's everyone's uh, acorns coming along? I'd love to see. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. I cheated a bit. Wow. <laughs> Mine's a little crooked. <laughs> Mine I like erased part of, even though I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, well, you can try it again, right? You know, now you know the basic technique, so you can use it. Oh, I can't quite see yours, Laurels. Oh, there it is. Nice. I love that everyone's coming up with these beautiful drawings. If you really want to really stretch yourself, you can try doing it with your off hand. So I, I am left dominant. You can try doing the same thing with your right hand too, because sometimes you'll find you'll come up with a, a better drawing working with your off hand, doing these little techniques. So you can give that a shot too. I'm going to give it a try. I don't feel uh, very competent with this side. I'm going to move this over here. And let's see what happens. Uh, the teacher that I was asking, he's right-handed and he was showing me how to do it with his left hand because he's uh, very ambidextrous for drawing. I am not quite so good. <laughs> I, I have done some painting with my off hand though. So this will be my first time trying this one. So working with your off hand is a very good mental exercise for your brain. It's a good um, it's a good warm up exercise as well. So I'm going to draw my dots again. And so that's my width. And now I'm going to go with my length. Kind of connect the dots.
I'm definitely rougher on this side. But I'll bet you I can get something that looks like an acorn. And I'll bet you can too. <laughs> There's also blind contour drawing where you would draw it without actually looking at your paper. That's a different kind of technique. So I'm widening out my acorn because it looks really wonky. Here we go. Then I want to find my center spot with the light on it. Here we go. And little circles. It's funny how circles are so much more difficult with this. Hand. Yeah, I'm doing like zigzags. I'm trying to do circles, but I don't have that much control. <laughs> no, neither do I. So this could be interesting. Oh, here we go. I just changed my placement of my hand. One of our community members, Ame, is ambidextrous and he does some art. Oh yes, I know Ame. Yeah. I have one of his paintings. Oh really? Yeah, Very it's cool. hanging up in my room. Cool, I love, love work. Yeah, he paints with both hands at the same time. Yeah, so cool. He did a little- He's my brother. <laughs> yeah, he's your he's brother? brother? Yeah, he's my brother. Aw, yay! I'm his baby sister. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, he lives. He's in very good at it, but yeah. yet some of us are not even close to him. <laughs> Our oldest brother is into carving. Ami is into art. I'm more of a sewer. One of our sisters is into beading. So it's kind of different. You have a big artist family. Yeah, well rounded. You just set up a shop and sell all of it. Yeah. Yes. And uh, is one of your brothers, he was in one of those uh, Canadian Moments uh, videos, wasn't he? Uh, our oldest brother, July. Yeah. I remember seeing that one when I was little. Yes. He's a carver. He's, he's a okay. carver one. I can't carve. I've tried it. I'm very, very bad. <laughs> I'm not good at sculpting. We're supposed to do a hulik uh, carving class in March, but love that. unfortunately that happened right yeah. when coronavirus hit, so we had to cancel. Um, but we do have the soapstone and like everything ready, so maybe one day soon we'll get to do it. I would um, love that. that would mm -hmm. be but also Serapio Itusarjuat, who is going to teach the class, he is in Iglulik now. Oh, okay. Uh, He's hunting, so oh. I think he'll be away for part of the fall as well. Just before the COVID-19, you were going to have a COVID, um Yeah. Will that happen? I mean, will that go on later on? Well, it will go on later on. I just don't know when, because it is very hands-on, you know. I yeah. think because we're using sharper tools, we really need a teacher there. We can't do it virtually. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully one day soon, though. I was really looking forward to that. Well, I don't know that my offhand acorn is looking as nice, but <laughs> I'll show you so far. It's looking a little lumpy. <laughs> I feel like mine is very strawberry shaped. Like it's like pointed at the bottom. You're making a straw corn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's delicious. Especially for those squirrels. Um, I live near Trinity Bellwoods Park and we have two albino squirrels. Uh huh. And, um, they're really not scared of people. Like they'll come right up to you. So. Maybe yeah. if I gave them a strawberry acorn, they would like me. They might. They might be yeah. a forever. <laughs> I have cheeky little acorns in my backyard and they've been uh, 
taking bites out of my tomatoes. Uh, my parents have a, a garden at their cottage and they were they were they had like maybe three beets in the garden and a squirrel just took the biggest beet and like pulled out the whole thing yep. leaves and all and ran up the tree and was like throwing all the leaves off and then eating the beets right in front of my parents and they were so jealous and angry <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone's offhand? <laughs> we probably should have started with the offhand and then done the, the good one, right? Because <laughs> now I got to try to trace the lines with my offhand, and this could be interesting. Connect those little dots. This one is definitely messier, but it's still recognizable. I just like hanging out with people online too. We get to have conversations. <laughs> I don't get out much. So this is how I socialize. <laughs> I've got a friend who's coming over to make art with me tomorrow though. We're going to hang out in the backyard and do that. Wow, that sounds so wonderful. So nice when you can spend time outside. Yeah. Creating. I have a really nice yard, so I'm glad I get to share it with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think with these workshops, it's easier to take yourself off mute and chat. There are just some that are very, very instructions based. Yes. So that's why we ask people to mute. But um, I think we're all having a nice time hanging out and staying quiet. So feel free to chime in. Yeah, please do. I feel like if we were doing this in the same room together, everyone would be chatting, but because we're on the Zoom call, I'm like sneaking around in the back and stuff. It's not <laughs> yeah, there it was different. But... Chantel, I was just interested in the name again of the illustrator that you learned this technique from. Oh, his name is, let me double check, uh, James Sisti. Here, I'll type it in so that you can see. His classes are very good. And he has a group called There we go. His group is called Hike and Draw LLC. And he's out of New York City, and he offers classes through Eventbrite. And I've found them very informative. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, my new acorn still looks like an acorn, even if it's a little rough. How do you do that, Shan? I don't know. I just <laughs> I just draw little circles and <laughs> practice. <laughs> but everyone's basic you know, like I almost called it a unicorn instead of an acorn. <laughs> hey, I like it because it's kind of abstract looking too. And I think that there is you can throw these abstract acorns in places. I think yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah. 
Confidence is key. Just keep going. Hmm? Confidence is key. And even with, if we're doing like zigzags, like eventually if you do so many layers, they yeah. kind of blend together and look like circles. Yeah, you're just building up a texture with it. Yeah. Would we be able to take this time to do a group shot of your good or bad acorns? <laughs> um, so I'm going to pause the recording for a second. You got something out of this short lesson. Oh, I learned something. I did learn something. Good. I'm glad. Yes, it is meditative. I like that aspect. It is. Yeah. And yeah. You just draw an egg this way or something if you really want it to get into your basic drawing exercises. Just mm -hmm. little circles and building them up with the shadows and keeping them out of the light areas. Do you have any tips about like warming up at the beginning? Uh, warming up. Some of the things I like to do is just uh, let my mind wander too. I do sketchbooks where I just draw in response to sounds I hear. So let's say there's music going, I'll draw, like if something, music kind of goes up and it reaches a crescendo, my drawing might kind of go up and down. Mm. Or kind of, like if it's really rough sounding, I might be more scribbly and then smooth in circles. So you can draw in response to sounds and you can do non-representational drawings. And okay. when you're doing this kind of movement, you can discover some really nice line shapes and line qualities that you might not have uh, achieved by trying to draw something right in front of you or from a, a photo. Uh, other things that you can do to kind of help wake your brain up. Uh, I have put paper on top of my head and then try to draw something in front of me straight down like this, you end up with some really weird lines, but it helps shake up your brain and uh, feel more free with the drawing. Wow. Yeah. Do you put like of things. A, a hard surface on top of your head and then draw? Yeah, that's probably book, like a book or something and then draw on top <laughs> of okay. it. Okay. Oh, that's saying. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that one yeah. where I like, like that somebody will draw on your back and you have to guess what they're drawing oh that's cool yeah. <laughs> kind of sneaky too because your back doesn't have all the same kind of nerve endings so yeah yeah who knows <laughs> what's going on how'd your drawing turn out on your head <laughs> jen i get that question yes you're here yeah uh back when you did uh botanical art mm-hmm and, and you have to draw from like, from like real subjects, just like this class? Yes. You usually measure them? Uh, the proportions or? I would measure, I wouldn't necessarily measure with a ruler, but I would take proportions. So I might hold my pencil load and, uh, and figure it out that way. Uh, right. Depending on what you're doing, you can actually measure it if you want to be very, very yeah. specific. So it depends on the level of illustration that you're doing. For right. me, I was making a series of identification booklets and signs for a botanic garden. So I was trying to keep the proportions in, but it wasn't completely, it was line work drawings. It wasn't paintings or anything where I was matching color. All right. But it was a really interesting job too, because not only was I out in the woods drawing uh, plants from life, but I also had access to something called a herbarium, which is kind of like a library, but for plant samples. And there were specimens in there that were over 100 years old, and I got to draw them and see how they compared to more recent specimens. So that was that was really interesting. Wow. It was and in the case of plants or flowers, maybe, is there any like feature that you have to count? Because in the case of birds, you have to count like the, the flight feathers. The flight they feathers. The exact number, you know? Uh, I didn't get now? quite that detailed with mine, but I was also drawing, sometimes there were more simple pieces like, oh, there's a kind of flower that grows here in Canada that's called a trillium. 
and it comes with three petals. Well, I can even, I even remember how to draw it now. So it'll, it'll come out in this shape and then another shape. So I had to know that there were the three. The center area was basically like a whole bunch of the little bumps and things with more of a texture. And there were also, um, there's three leaves that come out as well that, that match this in shape. So some plants, it's funny, I drew them enough that I remember kind of like the formula of how to draw them. And these would have the central line here. So this would be like a basic trillium, the yeah. blossom with the three, the three little leaves and the three petals here. And I could even get more detailed than that if I really wanted to. Because each of the, the blossoms also has a line down the middle. And then there would be veins that would come down. Trillium is a, it's a purple one or a white one? They come in purple, they come in white, and there are sometimes pink ones. I think there might be a yellow. Uh, where I'm living in Ontario right now, this is the provincial flower of Ontario. Uh, but, and the white ones are the ones that you tend to see more often in Ontario, but in Eastern Canada, you see more of the purple ones. Right. Kind of purple, dark red. Yeah. But it's fun. I, I remember how to draw that one just because it's it's very specific, but I don't know. I didn't count all the the little, I don't even remember what they're called anymore. The, the little, <laughs> little parts that... Yeah, but th those little parts, if, it, if you were doing a, like a scientific drawing, you had to yes, count them. I would them. need to count them if it was scientific. Oh, right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess we see that a lot too because it's an uh, Ontario logo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is part of the Ontario logo for sure. But if you leave any one of those elements out, it doesn't quite look right anymore. Yeah. That's so no. nice. Cool. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? The art behind me is mostly stuff I've made as well. There's a couple pieces that are not, but mostly. Yeah. Yeah, does any, anybody have questions about Shan's other art? All the other different mediums. What's your favorite? <laughs> My favorite varies from moment to moment. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. I guess that's a bad question. It's like asking a cook, like, what's your favorite thing to cook? Like, <laughs> yeah, like I, I like working in watercolor. I like working with acrylic. I work in porcelain paint. I really like porcelain paint, but like I said before, I don't have access to my studio. Mm -hmm. and I don't own my own kiln yet, so I'm kind of stuck with that. I can't work on it. Yeah. Oh. I remember you joined our printmaking workshop in, mm -hmm. I guess it was February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was really fun. That was, that was a cool new. I have one of my little prints here. <laughs> ah, so That's cute. Oops, he fell a little off. fish. He was a, a seal, this one. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, pick him up. There we go. <laughs> Looks like you've used him quite a few times. I I was going to put him on a on a piece of art, and then I changed my mind. So he's out there for something else later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's nice when you have lots of little trinkets that you can put in different art pieces or transfer if you don't like the art piece anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes there's paintings I've made, and I really don't like the paintings, but the colors are good. Mm -hmm. And I can cut them up and use them as collage elements. So oh. cool. Yeah. And nothing gets wasted. Yeah. That but is it also means I have a house full of junk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you can find a use for everything in your house, right? I'm still waiting to find a use for my cemetery <laughs> stick. I think I'm going to make a wall <laughs> hanging with it. Yeah. Oh, cool. It has to be called cemetery stick. Yeah, 
Well, I'm going to stop the recording, but I'd love to chat for a few more minutes if you have the time.